Okay. Hi, Doug. How are you? I'm great. How are you today? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I, I got to ask right off the bat, what, what flavor Starbucks are you drinking there? Actually, I shock everyone because it's Earl Grey tea. <laughs> uh, they, they have tea at Starbucks, do they? Yeah, right, it's surprising. Uh, it's the same when I think that they have coffee. It's like they actually have coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, welcome to the show. Nice to have you with us. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, your book. Your latest book is called Life Between Seconds. And according to your bio, this is your eighth published book. Is that correct? That is correct. I have uh, six as part of one series, and I also published one that was part of a collective series. So I was one author of six in that one. Uh, have you been a writer your whole life? I would say since second grade was when I kind of discovered that flair. I wrote a story for my second grade class. It was kind of the unhappily ever after of Cinderella because I was trying to push back and my teacher thought it was so funny and intentionally it was supposed to be funny. And she had me read it to the class. And ever since then, I kind of had this real big drive to create stories, to capture stories, to hear stories. And I tried to avoid it for a while, but I, I couldn't. So I came back to it and had not been driving full force into it ever since. Uh, are you making a living as a writer or do you do something else? I make my living as a writer. I This book is, again, one of eight now and then i also do full-time travel writing that's actually where i get most of my my focus and my career travel writing okay travel blog no it's actually i work for a travel company and so i write travel articles for them i write sample itineraries to get people inspired and i lead kind of the content team over on that side and i have been an international traveler since 2006. And so with that, I've just taken my experiences and have been able to utilize them towards this really unique opportunity. Okay, I'm curious about that because on YouTube now, there's 100 million people doing travel uh, videos, shows and things like that. But you're not doing that, right? I am not doing that. No. Okay, so the company you work for, they send you someplace and you have to just write about your experience there. It's, so you're not doing like hotel reviews and airport review. You're not doing that, right? Correct. I'm not doing the reviews like that. Uh, there are times when I have offered my freelance services to those types of platforms. But normally what I do is uh, I've been to 48 countries since 2006. My plan is to get to 50 before I'm 40. So I have a few years there. But with my own travel experience, I <laughs> this is how old or, or how long ago this was is uh, I actually found this listing through Craigslist when it was a viable kind of job search platform. And they were looking for people who can write about experiences in a few different countries. And I'd been to all the countries that they were asking for. So I sent them some samples. It was maybe a couple paragraphs on I think Australia. And they were like, oh, great. So I started writing sample itineraries. If someone was going to go to Australia for 10 days, what would they do? Or if someone was going to go to Italy for 14 days, what are examples of things they would do logistically? How would they travel? Where would they go within that timeline? And it just blossomed from there. I was a freelance writer with them for, uh, let's see, 2013 to 2017, so four years. And then I was brought on full time and have kind of led the content team since. And figured out what people are really interested in, in terms of when they're looking for trips, in terms of where should they go, you know, top 10 lists on where to visit in Italy or uh, untapped treasures of Southeast Asia or these other ideas that kind of captivate people and inspire them to travel. So it really mixes in well with my, with my desire to write novels. Okay. I'm curious about one particular country because I've lived there uh, for three years back in 2007 to 2010. It was Thailand. Have you, oh, yeah. You've been there? Yeah, love it. I spent New Year's there. Uh, what was it? 2009 to 2010. I was there for, was it six weeks? I did like two months in all of Southeast Asia. Okay. So give me like one or two itinerary hotspots 
for Thailand for somebody who's never been there? Somebody who's never been, well, of course, Bangkok. I mean, you have to go. It's essential, really. But at the same time, if someone had a family as opposed to traveling with a couple or on their own, uh, Phuket is great. I always say that Krabi is some place people should visit. It's just naturally gorgeous and you can visit the islands around there, Koh Phi Phi, which is great. Going to Chiang Mai is essential, especially for people who want to try the food classes. They're, the majority of them are up there, you know, cooking classes, learning how to cook particular Thai food, visiting the, the local communities, the ethnic communities outside of Chiang Mai. And it's also really easy to get into Laos from there. So you kind of combine things. Uh, it's easy to also add on Siem Reap and Angkor Wat if you're visiting Thailand. So a lot of people like to do that. So I would say, of course, it always depends on how much time people have and the experiences they want to have. But those are, I think, the essential experiences or places to visit when there. One of the... Uh, you, you lived there for three years. <laughs> I lived there for three years. But one of the, the more interesting things that I liked was to go up into uh, Khao Kho area in sort of the middle of the country. And there's this huge population of the, I guess they would be the indigenous people. The Thais refer to them as the mountain people. And I always found them very fascinating to see the, the sort of the crafts that they did. And uh, they have their own language. It was, it was very interesting. I, I enjoyed them. Yeah, there's actually a very large population among community uh, in Irvine, California, which is about 30 minutes from where I live, south. That, that must be interesting. I, I can't think of any place farther apart from Khao Kho, Thailand than Irvine, California. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't disagree with you at all, but it's, it's a very big, uh, I know there's a reason and I used to know the reason, but I can't recall it at this moment for whatever, whatever purpose. But uh, there, there was a specific reason why, why it's there. Well, the weather wouldn't be that far off. I mean, the mountain people are used to a little bit cooler climate than being on the yeah. beach. Uh, let me ask you one more question and then we'll pivot over to your book specifically. So, okay, so I asked you about Thailand. Now I'm curious, what would you give as the top two hotspots for somebody traveling to the United States for the first time? Oh, see, that is the exact opposite of my purview. I am so <laughs> domestically challenged when it comes to giving people tips. I have a lot of friends from Australia or England who would ask me these things or even family and friends in the States. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to Florida. Where should I go? Or I'm going to New York. What should I do? And I'm like, I have no idea. But in terms of they icons. If someone is traveling from abroad and coming to the United States, I feel like New York City is a must because it's not only an American icon, but it's also a pop culture icon. So you get a lot in a small space when you visit there, as well as easy transportation between places, which I'm, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, and one of the things that I guarantee is that when you come to visit, it is difficult to get around whether you have a car or not. So it's I, I have trouble recommending Los Angeles as a key destination for people to visit, but I'm always fond of San Francisco as well. So I feel like a combination of New York and San Francisco is a fantastic combination. At the same time, you get a little bit of the same, but in different ways. I mean, you get that what a, a European style city in America feels like. You get the food experience, American food experience. You get the different ambiance of the two cities on the coast, but you miss out on a lot as well. Uh, but at least with San Francisco, you, you can go see the Redwoods or you can see the water and do kind of a sailing trip or so I think that you still get access to that kind of California coast vibe, even in a city that not known for its beaches or warmth, as in weather, people are fine, but warm weather. Uh, but New York is, is so, so different, fast paced. The, 
the the architecture, the museums. I mean, it's so two big cities, two very different experiences. Well, let's pivot over to your book. So the book is called your latest book is called Life Between Seconds. Now, are your books travel related in description or is it just the particular countries that you were in that inspired these stories? So with Life Between Seconds, it was just the countries I was in that inspired it. And it also allowed me or my experience as a travel writer allowed me to understand how to best capture a space without visualizing it. Right. So how do I put somebody in this space without just trying to describe what it looks like? What experiences have I had that makes this more dynamic? Right. Oh, well, if I think about the smell of cooked meat in Buenos Aires, it puts me right there as opposed to trying to describe the color of the presidential palace. Right. And so it's that kind of thing that I was able to translate into the book. But with the previous books, they were book packages that I was hired to write. So those experiences were far different. And the way that I approached the content was very different than with Life Between Seconds, which was my first attempt at a novel. I started writing it in 2011 and it has taken, you know, 11 years for it to finally come out. Uh, is this a fiction? It is fiction. Yes. OK. Um, give us like a one minute synopsis of the book, if you can. Yeah, absolutely. It's about uh, a kind of youthful American guy and a uh, Argentinian woman in her in her elder years and how their friendship saves them from their past traumas. Do they fall in love? They do not fall in love. No. So it's <laughs> it's just about their friendship and kind of the way in which they're able to navigate through the nightmares chasing them because of the relationship that they develop. OK, why is he there? To be honest, he was actually a Trojan horse. It's in that idea of making somebody a little more relatable to people who might read the book, in my case, an American audience. So now people can read him, connect with him, understand that kind of American culture that he comes from and then use him as a gateway and portal into Sophia, who is the female protagonist from Argentina into her culture and her experience that might otherwise feel alienating. Well, that sounds interesting. Uh, according to your bio, the book comes out on the 15th of this month, right? Correct. OK, is pre-order available at this time? Pre-order is available. Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Target. I was excited to see it on pre-order for all three of those places. Well, Doug, we do have to wind this down. Uh, do you have a website you want to give out? I do. It's easy to remember. It's just my name, DouglasWeissman.com. And on your website, there's uh, information about how to pre-order the book and all your other work as well is on there? Correct. All my other work, all my other types of work as well, travel writing, screenwriting. Uh, as, if it's writing and comes with a story, chances are I'm involved. Is there going to be a part two to this book? Is it going to turn into a series? Not this book. This book is definitely a one off. But I am completely emotionally invested in these characters. And I, I can't imagine another another story, another foray into their story. But I do mentally kind of keep track of where their stories would have taken them after the book closes. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you and best of luck. And we look forward to the book launch on the 15th. Thanks very much. Me too. And I loved being here. Thank you so much.